Hi, I'm Dr. Sunil Richardson. So we're going to do a face makeover surgery now. Uh, we're going to do work on the jaw, lower jaw mainly, some work on the cheekbones, cheek and nose. All of it in one go and so I tend to call these as face makeover. Also because it involves heart tissue work, cartilaginous work and soft tissue work. Alright, so what we're going to do is, this height is a little bit less. So I'm going to increase this height. And also you look here, the projection, I'm going to get a little bit down. The next thing is, I'm going to shape this in. So jaw sculpting, this is going to go in. The, the angle is square, so I'm going to do some angle osteoplasty with osteectomy. So you're going to get a better shape like this. It's going to be a V-shape, nice lower third of the mandible, or lower third of the face. Then we're going to take off a little bit of this mala prominence. I'm going to do it from inside. Plan is to reduce only 4 millimeters. Buckle fat pad and finally the nose. So the nose is very broad. If you want to have it much smaller. So I'm going to make a nice small tip with a little supra tip break and reduce the height and the width and give a much more shapely nose. So that's a plan. So when we do surgeries like this, we either give a trans myeloviral intubation through here or sometimes we switch the tubes during surgery so we have a nasal intubation we get the oral part or the lower third of the face or the middle third done and then we go on and put the tube in the oral aspect and then get the nose done so that's going to be our plan we think it's going to take about five hours roughly give or take a half an hour or so and the biggest advantage when we do major procedures like this in one go is that the patient doesn't need to come back every time, back and forth, back and forth, the recovery and everything is quicker. I'm able to give better results in one way. Thank you. It is starting yet another genioplasty with jaw sculpting. I'm making the incision now. So the surgery is going to be done all the way posteriorly. I keep making this point for a lot of my surgeries because that's when the results are really nice. So you see this chin, it's very broad. Uh, almost like two horns are there. But this is not really suited for a young lady. So I'm going to do some shaping. That's going to be done at the very end. So we've just finished fixing another genioplasty and this is also both vertical and horizontal advancement. I'm going to show you the amount of horizontal advancement that I've achieved. So it's about, it's eight millimeters, eight to nine millimeters horizontal advancement. And uh, we've got a little bit of vertical advancement as well. I don't like to do more than five mm and this is uh, four mm of vertical advancement. So we've got uh, both horizontal and vertical augmentation genioplasty. Now it's not yet fully done. 
because I still don't have a pointy chin and for this lady a pointy chin will look good you can see the two cornu I call them like projections for a broad chin I'm going to retain this one and then I'm going to take off this part and shape it up and then go all the way posterior up to the angle on both the sides and include the jaw sculpting and the angle osteoplasty and osteectomy for better V-line. Through the mouth, so we also do cheek bone osteotomy through the mouth. It's really easy to tease it out. It's usually symmetrical. Through this intraoral vestibular incision, I've not only removed the buccal pad of fat, it's become, it's, it's made so long because I've also had to do an osteotomy of the mala bone. We reduced the projection of the cheekbone. I've reduced it by five millimeters for this patient. Mala bone reshaping with a little bit of reduction and buccal pad fat removal. So you can see how the face has become angular already in spite of the edema. for the local anesthesia to act. It's essential for me to harvest some graft. Whenever it's not a major surgery, like a reconstruction one or an augmentation one, so I'm able to manage the cartilage from the node itself. So we just finished with the nasal osteotomy. I'm going to show you how narrow the nose has become already. Uh, that puncture is a little bit wider than my liking, but we've got the nose really narrowed. The bones were really hard. You can see now. So I've fashioned out a septal extension. I've fashioned out the septal septal extension graft from the septal graft that we harvested, it's gonna suffice.
just closing up this rhinoplasty. Easy. Set. So we've got the steady strip and the nasal pack done. Now the last step is to place this. And for whom we'd also done uh, septoplasty with rhinoplasty Kilochiri. so because it was a septal bone harvest and uh, a septoplasty I needed to put in a large pack that's out now we will let the plinth remain for another day or two and then I will remove the splint off as well Probably there after tomorrow is a good time. Ali Lele Po, Kun Chabalu. Right. So this is gonna get more taper with time. It usually takes about four to six weeks for all of that to heal up. Day six, we're taking off the nasal splints. Okay. Yeah, that looks really nice. You can see how the dorsal is the lines in a nice shape. It's a beautiful shape with the nose, it's a nice tip. In a while we're gonna show you. And the super club, now we will not get off the calm style. You will tell us about it. It will be the coming air, shape, put the way to put the way in the angulation is straight over there. You will see the curve with the curve, put the way in the curve, the tongue full of the body, full nose. So we can remember it. So we can have another one of it. Stitches are going to be the people. Saya tidak bersedia lagi untuk itu. 